Hi, I'm Liv Breeden. I'm a card designer on the Hearthstone team, and I work on card sets like Forged in the Barrens. And I'm Joe Killian. I was the set lead for Forged in the Barrens. And there's so many exciting new mechanics coming with this set, but today we're here to dive a little bit deeper into spell schools. So Liv, can you tell us a little bit more about what they are? Well, spell schools are like minion types, but you know, for spells. So uh, we've got fire, frost, arcane, nature, fell, holy, and shadow. There's seven in total. We thought Spell Schools would be a really great addition to the game. Not only does it create these new synergies for us to play with and new archetypes you can build decks around, but it also really emphasizes the fantasy of a class. Mages are masters of various Spell Schools, so they'll have access to Arcane and Fire and Frost, whereas Druid is a little more focused on the wild, so they tend to have access to a lot of nature spells. Yeah, I think one of the cards that we've always really wanted to make is a mage spell that says discover a fire spell it sounds awesome, right? Uh, but what does that mean? And how do, you, how do you tell players what a fire spell is, what counts and what doesn't? Yeah, that's something like we spent a lot of time really focusing on with spell schools was how do we make them very recognizable at a glance? When you pull up a fire spell, the art should have flames or explosions in it. And the name should have something like flaming or blazing or maybe just fire in it. And we'll be tagging spells throughout the game with these new spell schools. So Fireball will become a fire spell and Frostbolt will become a frost spell. The obvious ones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the holy spells that we have coming and forged in the Barrens. Invigorating Sermon is a Paladin holy spell that gives plus one, plus one to all of your minions on your battlefield, hand, and deck. Paladin has access to a lot of swarmy decks. This is a really great option for that. It buffs everything on your battlefield, in your hand, and in your deck, so you can really play it at any time and feel pretty good about it, knowing that big buff minions are coming down the line. Holy spells are usually going to fall into two categories, buffs and healing. So this is really Paladin's bread and butter. Another card that we have for Paladin is Veteran War Medic. Now this is an example of a minion that interacts with spell schools. Whenever you cast a holy spell, it'll summon a 2-2 medic with lifesteal. So this is really great because Paladin spells buff, so you can either buff this to give it more longevity and you keep making more tokens, or you can buff the tokens to give you more lifesteal in the moment. Stay with more buff targets for Paladin is always a great thing. So let's take a look at a legendary minion that uses holy spells. Cariel Rome. She has Divine Shield, Rush, and every time she attacks, she reduces the cost of holy spells in your hand by one, which means she's going to do a huge swing in your favor when you play her, take out an enemy minion, and then follow up with a bunch of buffs that you just recently reduced. But we fight. A major theme for Hearthstone this year is growth, and hearkening back to that classic WoW experience of starting out as a meager adventurer and leveling up and exploring the world until you become a great, powerful hero. I'm really excited for characters like Cariel to come in because we get to explore their stories and see how they unfold throughout the year. There are 10 legendary mercenaries, one for each class, and they're characters you might identify with if you've played World of Warcraft, like the Human Paladin, or perhaps even the Forsaken Warlock, Tamsin Rome. Now, Tamsin is a master of shadow magic, and because of that, whenever she's on the board and you play a shadow spell that costs one or more, she adds a copy of it to your hand that costs zero. And a lot of shadow spells are bigger damage or removal spells, so this allows you to remove a big, scary enemy threat and then do it again for free. It helps you build a whole new deck archetype based around these shadow spells. And we'll be able to provide support for it from previous expansions, like Soulshare. One thing you may have noticed is that Tamsin and Cariel actually share the last name Rome. And this is because they're sisters on opposite sides of the story. So you can start to imagine the drama that might start to unfold here. All right, so Tamsin cares about shadow spells. So what kind of shadow spells can we expect in this expansion? We have Grimoire of Sacrifice, and with this spell, you get to destroy a friendly minion and then deal two damage to all enemy minions. This spell is so warlock because you get to sacrifice a minion, which who doesn't love that? But then you also get to deal two damage to all enemies, which is great. So if you have like eggs or something like that, and you just want to pop them and get whatever's inside, it's upside with more upside. Another great example of a Weirdly Warlock-themed Shadow spell is Soul Rend. Now with this card, you deal 5 damage to all minions, but you destroy a card in your deck for each one killed. Warlocks are all about sacrificing for greater power. So while this is a really big board clear, losing 7 cards out of your deck can be kind of a steep price. 
But you know, maybe there's cards in the future that can take advantage of that. Thanks everyone for joining us. Spell schools are here to stay. Not only are we going to be tagging old spells throughout the game, but we'll also continue to explore this mechanic in future expansions this year and beyond. We can't wait for you to get your hands on these cards and discover your favorite spell school.